The gentleman yields back his time. Thank you very much. The uh, distinguished gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. I thank the chairman. Mr. Chairman, most of us just spent about a month in our district working. We call it recess. The, the fake news media calls it recess, but trust me, it's not like recess in the fifth grade. So uh, countless meetings and town halls and, and, and scores of, of very important conversations with our constituents. Um, and one of, the, one of the very alarming and consistent complaints that we have from our constituents is the difficulty to navigate through the federal bureaucracy in, w in whatever way that they're challenged to do so. For businesses, uh, including agriculture, big problem, EPA, DOL, for, for our constituency across the board, IRS, Social Security, disability claims, legitimate interactions between the citizens that were sworn to serve and the federal government that allegedly performs in that manner. Now, Congress, through Article I, we establish law and appropriate monies, and the executive branch executes law and policy and spends money. That's a basic description of the division of powers. So it's the executive branch and the departments and agencies thereof that our citizenry are loudly complaining about regarding availability to work their case files. And we're told at the district level, in 435 congressional districts in this country, I'd, you know, maybe some of my colleagues are hearing something different. I'd be interested to, to, to know that. But from what I understand, across the country, every congressional district is the same story. We, we're getting told, well, the backlog. Well, it, it's going to take 18 months to process this. It's going to take six months to process this. You have to constantly update your, your own websites to advise the citizenry that we're sworn to serve how early they need to log in, get their application turned in, because there's a backlog. Taking a long time. This is how long it takes. And that amount of time is getting longer and longer and longer. Passports, it's insane. We have, we've had nine million illegal crossings. The floodgates opened on the southern border I got husbands that can't marry their wives, can't get a visa, trying to follow the law. I got businesses that can't get their senior engineers in here because they're installing a piece of equipment that requires an international team. We can't get the engineer a visa. I got, I've got daughters that cannot come to America to care for their dying mother because they, we cannot get her le a visa legally. We might as well send them through Mexico. They can roll right in and handed up business. And, you, and the federal government, with all due respect to you all, man, God bless you one and all. But you're gonna sit here today and tell us everything's cool? We're, we're teleworking, it's not cool. We go into buildings in this bizarre realm called Washington, D.C., and just look at the doors. There's nobody there. There's old signs on a lot of these doors. It says the office is closed, we're working from home because of COVID. A little mask symbol on the door. Got old, like, Chinese restaurant menus stuck in the door. It's not working. We need, we need our executive branch to perform in person, in your office, end of story. If I ran things, Many are glad that I don't. Everybody would be back at work and performing in the manner in which we were sworn to do so. Mr. Dorman, I appreciate your service, and because of my rant, I'm going to give you an opportunity in my closing half a minute to respond, good sir. Yeah, thank you, Congressman. 
The NRC remained open, as I said, throughout the pandemic. We have don't have those transactional services with constituents. We work with licensees and applicants, and we also serve the American public, as you noted. Any member of the public can go to our website, and we have a hotline, and that hotline was manned 24-7 throughout the pandemic and is today. So we are accessible every I day. I appreciate your people. response, but generally speaking, your website operations, they don't work for a regular American. It takes hours and hours. If you have a problem, make a phone call. You get on a phone call, you're on hold for, for four hours, then you're disconnected. I'm telling you, it doesn't work. So, Mr. Chairman, my time has expired. Thank you for this hearing today. Hopefully, we can have another. I yield. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, an inquiry. The back his time. Does the gentleman seek uh, time? Just to, uh, just to inquire. Of the gentleman's recognized. I thank the chair. Uh, is it not true that, in fact, with respect to passport operations, Passport employees are not allowed to telework. Well, I, I is that honestly, not the case? I, I do not have that direct answer. But what I would say to you is the gentleman remembers where we did have a hearing with specifically the young ambassador who handles that methodology, and she did recognize they have problems. Problem. I agree, and uh, she did, and that was what I think it could be said by Mr. Higgins perhaps others, that there are places where problems are apparent to people. And I would remind the gentleman that he would remind me, if I did not, that we're working together on that issue and that she, the young ambassador, gave us notice she would fix that problem by the end of September. The chair is correct. That day comes very near, and we will then reopen that issue, and I encourage the gentleman to be a part of that, and I respectfully thank him for his feedback. Thank you. And my only point was, it's the problem may there is a problem. We agree, but it's not about telework. I thank the chair. Well, and I, I agree with the gentleman. It's their problem to fix the problem. It is our issue that we have people that abound who provide us feedback too, and the gentleman knows that. And I do respect and appreciate his engagement.